الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق إلا أن يقولوا ربنا الله ولو لا دفع الله الناس بعضا ببعض لهدمت صوامع وبيع وصلوات ومساجد يذكر فيها اسم الله كثيرا ولينصرن الله من ينصره إن الله لقوي عزيز الذين إن مكناهم في الأرض أقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأمروا بالمعروف ونهوا عن المنكر ولله عاقبة الأمور صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Today, the third day of Sha'ban coincides with the birth of the Prophet's grandson, Al-Imam Al-Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. A true joy and a man who is a living example of Islamic values. And I say living because a person who dies yet his blood nourishes a whole forest of virtue and nobility is not considered dead. A person who dies and millions of individuals worldwide celebrate his birthday for the past almost 1400 years and commemorate his tragedy is not dead. A person who died, yet you have intellectuals, writers, historians, scholars studying his life and writing books about, his, about him, his philosophies, his ideologies, his principles, lessons and so on and so forth this individual is not dead he's still alive as the poet says in arabic ahyayta deen allah yabna muhammadin wa badalta doon adhabbi anhu wujuda wa salalta sayfaka fi wujuhin talama takhadat laha tayshe alhawa ma'buda وشرعت رمحك في صدور أضمرت لبن النبي ضغائنا وحقودا تبت يدا فئة تبت يدا فئة نافقت في الدين واختارت عليك يزيدا عش خالدا يا حسين فالبيض في صفحاتها كتبت لذكرك يا حسين خلودا so indeed, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the poet is telling him that you revive the religion of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Which stems from a saying, a common saying that is said, Islam 
was introduced to humanity through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Yet it was kept alive through Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the sacrifice of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Al Islam Muhammadiyul Wujud, Husseiniyul Khulud. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam is indeed a living example of the Islamic values. Now we want to spend some time a little bit talking about the Islamic values and Imam Hussein being a principle or a living example of the Islamic values. Because yesterday in the Globe and Mail, which is one of the biggest newspapers here in Canada, there was an article written about Muslims. The article was titled, The Gap Between Two Solitudes. It's talking about the difficulty some of the Muslims experience here in this part of the world. And here they quote a survey, and I'm quoting here, they say a two, 2010 survey of 1,700 people in Canada by the Canadian Race Relations Foundation found that, listen to this, 55% disagreed with the statement Muslims share our values. So in 2010, this you can get this article yesterday from the Globe and Mail. In 2010, a survey was done among Canadians, 1,700 Canadians, and it's what it found what 55% say they disagree with the statement that Muslims share our values. Inshallah, we fix this one day. Inshallah, before Imam Zamangi appears. Inshallah. So, that is interesting here. They disagree with the statements, Muslims share our values. Well, we will take quickly a look at what are the Canadian values, or some of the Canadian values. I don't have time to go all over the whole Canadian values. But, I'm going to reference a book that is published by Citizenship and Immigration Canada. So it's from the government, the Canadian government, basically. Inshallah, will this work, inshallah? I think it's disabled, I think. Poor thing. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I think this is attracting more attention than the lecture itself. I think, yalla, it's good as long as people's attention is directed this way, yalla. So, it's okay, as long people hear me, alhamdulillah. There is a book called Discover Canada. This is published by the Canadian Citizenship and Immigration of Canada. They published this book, Discover Canada. In it, they have some of the values, the Canadian values. So we're going to look at some of those values. And some of them, we're going to look at those that, specifically the ones that they say, they are about 900 years old from the Magna Carta. You know, an old treaty that was signed, you know, literally about 900 years ago. Some of the freedoms that were listed there, they say these basically are incorporated in the Canadian values. So we'll take a look at these and concentrate on those. And then we'll take a look at also another of their values. That's for how much time we have. And then we'll take a look at how Imam Hussein alayhi salam is the living example of all these values of the Islamic values. Interestingly, in the same Globe and Mail, they have a question, a survey. They're doing a survey. The survey states, would you visit a mosque? That's a survey. Today, at, you know, by 6.30 p.m. today, you know, so a few hours ago, I went up and I saw what are the results. So far, you know, at 6.30 p.m. today, the results were as follows. Those who said, yes, we would visit a, mon a mosque, 42%. No, we would not visit a mosque, it's 58%. The numbers are 3,657 who said yes, 5,106 who said no. We will not visit a mosque. Now, this is interesting. It's partly 
we have to do some work here to tell the society that Muslims are individuals who integrate in every society and accommodate every society. That's what a lot of people don't know. And that is something that is a duty that we have upon our shoulders. I mentioned it in the past and I keep on repeating it. We need to invite people to come to the mosques. We need to invite colleagues, co-workers, friends, invite them. Alhamdulillah, the lectures are also in English, so they understand. So we need to do this more often. We have to take the initiative. We need to hold, for example, a workshop or a conference about Islam. And Muslims in Canada, what contributions they have made here in this country. Nonetheless, these are all steps we have to take. And inshallah, I'll address them more. When we have the joint event, inshallah, on July 19th, the celebration of Imam Al Mahdi, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif, his birthday. I guess you guys are very tired, mashallah, you know, it's, I think. Maybe. So let's, let's hear a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So the ayah to begin, we'll start with this ayah that we recited from Surah Al Hajj. Verse number 40 and 41. Allah says, referring to the mu'mineen. He says, الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِن دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُ رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Allah is talking about believers who at the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ were forced to leave their homes and migrate for no crime other than them saying, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ that's it. The Muslims, they had nothing against the people of Quraysh. All they wanted is freedom to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They wanted to pray. They wanted to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to idols. But that was considered a crime when in fact that is the liberty for humanity, the mercy for humanity. Yet, practicing that mercy is a crime. Now, the ayah is talking about those individuals who were at the time of Rasulullah, those Muslims. But it applies to all times. To all times. That people sometimes, and we see in this day and age, take a look. In this day and age, in some parts of the world, people are being killed, persecuted. Why? Because they want to remember and commemorate Ahl al-Bayt, alayhim as -salam. They want to remember Ahl al-Bayt, they get persecuted, they get killed for doing so. The ayah says, those who were forced to leave their homes because they say, Rabbun Allah, Allah is our Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, the ayah before this ayah, Allah says, permission has been given to those who have been fought against, that they have been oppressed. And Allah indeed is capable of making them victorious. This ayah number 39 of Surah Al-Hajj is considered to be the first ayah that gave permission to Muslims to engage in combat, to defend themselves, to fight. This was revealed in Medina. So the whole time Muslims were in Mecca, they were not allowed to fight. Every day almost, Muslims used to come to Rasulullah in Mecca and say, Ya Rasulullah, we are hurt. We're being beaten up. We're being harassed. We're being kicked from our homes and the Prophet tells them, be patient. We cannot retaliate. We cannot fight. Until they moved to Medina and then the ayah was revealed. This ayah gave them permission. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating that they are going to defend against oppression. They're going to fight against oppression. And Allah states in the next ayah, number 40, the one that we just read, that وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ If it weren't that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables certain groups of individuals, certain communities, certain people to rise and fight and defend religion, if it weren't for that, what would happen? Listen to the ayah, it's quite interesting. لَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيَعٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ وَمَسَاجِدْ يُذْكَرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا 
then places of worship places of worship general places of worship sawama that, that's what sawma means places of worship wabiyun biyun means churches churches the places where the christians usually hold their religious gatherings and assemblies and salawat salawat is referring to what the synagogues the synagogues so Allah is referring first of all to all the religious places center he starts out by referring to all religious places and then he refers specifically to churches and then synagogues and finally he comes to masajid and mosques so many of those places of worship where Allah is being remembered they would be destroyed. They would be destroyed. This ayah tells us that Islam defends all religions. Islam protects all religions. Islam is not against any religion. Look at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The Jews of Medina, they were living with the Muslims. Nothing. No problem. The Jews of Fedak, the Jews of Fedak, they came to Rasulullah after Khaybar and they said, We don't want to fight with you. We don't want to engage in combat. Nor will we become Muslims. The Prophet said, No problem. They said, We want to live under the Islamic umbrella though, so we'll pay the taxes, the jizya. The Prophet said, No problem. The Christians of Najran, the Prophet said, No problem. You don't want to become Muslims? You want to live under the Islamic umbrella? No problem. Ahlan wa sahlan. You pay the taxes. So Islam never ever did it offend any religion. In fact, Islam protected religions. Islam protected people's rights. From day one. From day one. These are the values of Islam. These are the values of Islam. And in this ayah, Allah says, although the ayah is talking about jihad, but the ayah is general. Although the ayah is talking about physical combat to protect those places of worship. But the ayah is general. In other words, we have to, as Muslims, to strive to protect minorities or majorities or other religions. That's what, something we have to do. We protect them. We don't keep silent when we see somebody being oppressed. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam when he saw the Christian begging on the street during his khilafah said protect him, give him money, shelter him. We are not a religion that oppresses people. One day Amir al-Mu'mineen was walking on a journey. Along the path he met with a person who was Jewish. He walked with him until the, the, the road came to a fork. The Jew went on the right Imam Ali went with him walked with him a distance until he reached his destination when he reached his destination Imam Ali said okay now I will bid farewell to you so the Jew asked where is your destination he said mine is the other way at the fork junction my destination was the other way he said so why did you come with me then all this way he said because you became my companion you became my travel companion and I saw that it would be disrespectful for me to leave my companion and go so I walked with you to make sure that everything is covered your needs are covered you don't need anything help you've reached your destination now I'll go back the man looked at him and he said these are the manners of the prophets or the true successors of the prophets and he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, wa anna kabil haq wa siyu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Imam Hussein alayhi salam on his way to Karbala, he comes across a tent owned by a man called Wahab, who was Christian. He finds his mother there. He approaches her, he tells her, Ya Umma Wahab, tell your son that the person 
whom his prophet commanded him to follow has stopped by his tent and is heading towards Karbala. And he left. Umm Wahab was surprised when her son came. He said, Mother, what's happening? You don't look normal today. She said, Today it is as if Isa ibn Maryam visited us. Prophet Jesus, as if he himself came to see us. A man who holds his features, the features of the prophets, came here. So Wahab said, what did he tell you? She said, he told me that the man who your prophet told you and ordered you to follow has come here and he's heading to Karbala. What is that? He said, mother, last night I had a dream. In my dream, I saw Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Prophet Isa told me, Wahab, when a man comes here tomorrow and asks about you, follow him in his journey. Follow him. And today he came, this man came. He had been married only for two weeks. He took his mother and his bride and joined Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Arrived in Karbala, he was a Christian man. Arrived in Karbala on the day of Ashura, becomes a Muslim and he gets one of, becomes a martyr before Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Whom we stand before them all today and we say, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi. He's one of those individuals. Imam Hussein alayhi salam came on the day of Ashura to a black man by the name of John. As he was dying, he hugged him. He put his cheeks on his cheek. And the man cried. John cried when he saw this. Another servant who was Turkish, Turkish servant, not an Arab. Imam, Imam also put his cheek on his cheek before he dies. So he opened his eyes moments before he dies. Who's like me and the cheek of the Prophet's grandson is touching my cheeks. And that's how he died. And Imam Hussein puts his cheeks also on the cheek of Ali al-Akbar alayhi salam. His son. To tell people that Islam is universal. Islam appreciates everybody. Everyone. Black or white. Arab or non-Arab. Sayyid or non-Sayyid. Islam appreciates everybody. That is the true Islam. And this ayah carries this. Carries this principle. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And indeed Allah will support those who support him. Indeed Allah is capable of everything. He's powerful. He's mighty. Those, Allah continues in the next ayah, whom if we give them the opportunity to rule on the earth, what would they do? One, aqamu salat. They would establish prayers with the meaning of prayers. What else? Wa'atawu zakat. They will treat everyone generously and fairly when it comes to social values and social income and helping those individuals. What else? Wa'amaru bil ma'roof wa nahu anil munkar. They do amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. When the police, for example, tells us don't drive, don't speed because it could kill you. Speed can kill you and kill others. This is part of Amr bil Ma'ruf. Telling people something that will benefit them. Or telling people to stay away from things that will harm them. So Islam will come also and tell people to do things that will benefit them. Going to mosque and attending centers will benefit the spirituality of the human being. It will benefit him. Not doing so will harm him. That is Amr bin Ma'ruf Nahi Anil Munkar. That's why when we stand before Imam Hussein, what do we say? Ashhadu Annaka Aqamtal Salat Wa Ataital Zakat Wa Amarta Bil Ma'ruf Wa Nahaita Anil Munkar Wa Ata'ta Allah Wa Rasulahu Hatta Atakal Yaqeen. That's why we have a hadith from Imam Al Sadiq, Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alayhi, who states that these couple of ayat. 
They talk about the believers, yes? But they are referring to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein was forced to leave his land just because he says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. That's why. No other reason. No other crime did he commit other than haqq and establishing social justice. He wanted to establish social justice. So these are some of the values are from the Holy Quran here. From the Holy Quran. So now let's take a look at some of the Canadian values. See what do they have. We wonder why do people say, you know, 55% disagree with the statements that Muslims share our values. Okay, what are some of the Canadian values? We just heard about some of the Islamic values. Spreading justice, defending other religions, helping people, supporting them physically, financially, irrespective of their race and their religion. That's what Imam Hussein salam lived for. That's what the Holy Prophet taught. These are all living examples for us. Let's take a look. Among the values, the Canadian values are one, freedom of conscience and religion. Well, Islam says you're free. لا إكراه في الدين There is no compulsion in religion. We don't force people to become Muslims. But we tell them about what Islam is. What Islam has to offer. That we tell people about. And that attracts people to Islam. Making it the fastest growing religion in the world today. In fact, in the same article, in the same article, they say right now, there are about 800 84,000 Muslims in Canada. Okay? Then they say in a matter of few years, few years, the population of Canada will grow, or the Muslims will grow to about 3 million, making it the fastest growing religion in Canada here. So you can refer to the article as well. Why is it? People are attracted to Islam and Islamic values. If the Magna Carta 900 years ago said that people have to be conscious of other people's religion, Islam stated it not 900 years ago, but 1400 years ago. The Holy Prophet came with that message. The message of treating everyone with equality. Amir al-Mu'mineen, that famous saying that we quote several times, when he tells Malik al-Ashtar that people are one of two kinds. They are either your brothers or sisters in faith or your counterpart in humanity. So treat everyone justly. That are the words from 1400 years ago. These are Islamic values. Exactly what's written here. Then, what else? Freedom of thought, belief, opinion and expression. Including freedom of speech and press. A man stands up before Amir al Mu'mineen in Masjid al Kufa while he was the Khalifa of the Muslims and he insults Amir al Mu'mineen and he calls him a kafir. He calls Amir al Mu'mineen kafir. Kafirun ma afqahah. He says, Kafir, yet he knows religion so well. He has such a good knowledge of religion about Amir al Mu'mineen. People get up to kill him. He's insulting the Khalifa of the Muslims, the head of the state. Amir al Mumin said, No. If that's what he wants to say, let him say it. I either insult him back and be like him, or I forgive him and be better than him. And that's what I will do. I'll forgive him. And he told the Khawarij, who disagreed with Amir al Mumin, he told them, You disagree with me, that's fine. I will continue paying you from Baytul Mal. You will still get your shares. You have a difference of opinion. Just fine. Yeah, you can have a difference of opinion. Nothing wrong. Not like what we see today when there is a difference of opinion. Mashallah, bombs and rockets and tanks and whole eradication of individuals. Amir al Mumini said, I have nothing against you as long as you don't harm other people. Don't harm people. You want to say what you want, go ahead. Don't harm other people. And indeed, he did not do anything to them until they killed 
Abdullah ibn Khabbab ibn al irats and his wife and the unborn son. When they killed him, then he raised war. He waged war against them. Because now they started attacking Muslims. They started attacking people. And that's in every country. Today we hear it, mashallah, we memorize it. Listen to the news. We are protecting our sovereignty. We're protecting our freedom. People are attacking our freedom. You hear this in the news. So why is it when Islam wants to protect its freedom, it becomes a terrorist religion? So these are the Islamic values. Express your opinion. There is nothing wrong with it. Go ahead. They had it here. That's what Islam shares. Islam says we defend mosques. But before mosques, we defend churches and we defend synagogues. And we defend every place of worship. Sawami'u. Wabi'un wa salawatun wa masajid yudkaru fi asmullahi kathira. We protect all these places of worship. We don't attack them. That's Islam. These are Islamic values. And that's what Abi Abdullah al Hussein did throughout his life. Then, what else? Freedom of peaceful assembly. People want to assemble peacefully, they're free to do so. There's nothing wrong with it. Let people assemble. Ahlul Bayt never stopped people expressing their opinion. Imam Ali was told several times, these khawarij kill them, finish them. He said, no. They gather together, they create problems, but to themselves, as long as they don't harass Muslims, we don't have an issue with them. Let them do whatever they want. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know who's the winner, who's right and who's wrong. And he told them, it doesn't mean that he was quiet about it. He told them repeatedly, what you're saying is wrong, what you're doing is wrong. But he did not attack them. He gave them their freedom. They can assemble. Not today. You see some nations. People carrying roses. Roses in their hands. And they demonstrate for their rights. Treat us justly. Treat us equally. They eradicate them all. They kill them all. And they destroy the infrastructure at the place where they gather. I mean, what is the infrastructure? Why do you destroy that? But ba'd. Subhanallah. So what we see today happening in some parts of the Muslim world or actions carried by some Muslims, these actions do not represent what the true Islamic values are. How come when it comes to Islam, then it becomes terrorism? But other religions or other places, you don't call it terrorism. Just a couple of weeks ago in this country, one of the most developed countries in the world. Because of a hockey game. You saw what happened. You saw what happened. A hockey game. Did you ever hear the word terrorism? Read all the news. Now I didn't. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I didn't. But what do you explain breaking, you know, shops and uh, blowing up cars and things? Riots. Okay, riots. So why is it if, if, they, if these individuals were Muslims? Oh my goodness. Oh, you see what happens. Last year there were, here again in this country, we're not going too far. In this country last year, there was a summit held in Toronto. And you saw what happened again. Riots, demonstrations. People are demonstrating. Okay, we'll see, we see other people are also demonstrating. And then, now these riots that happened in the past couple of years, can we say that those individuals represent all of Canada? The 30 million people who live in Canada are like this? They blow up cars and they loot and mashallah they destroy and they... Would that be a fair comparison? Now the whole world watch what happened in the riots. Read all the news. World news, read them. Just a couple weeks ago. World news. International news. People were talking about what happened there in Vancouver. Now is that... 
Can we say all of the 30 million Canadians are all like this? It's not right. I mean, the logic doesn't accept it. The mind doesn't accept it. The conscience doesn't accept it. So why is it that we say now, Muslims don't share our values. Muslims don't share our values. All Muslims don't share your values? Just because I told once an, uh, an interviewer on, on television, they had an interview. An incident happened in the press. Remember when they printed the picture of our Holy Prophet? It was an inappropriate picture. And there were some demonstrations in the Muslim world demonstrating, protesting against this. He said, how many? I said, about 1.6 billion. Imagine if all the 1.6 billion did these things. What kind of a world would it be now? If the 1.6 billion all went into riots and, and caused problems. We'd have chaos. I told him a small group of individuals, when you compare them to 1.6 billion, do some actions which are not accepted by the Islamic values. We say all Muslims are like that. We have to be just sometimes. We have to be fair when we address issues. And then they say freedom of association. You can associate with whomever you will, whomever you want. Freedom, free. Again, Islam doesn't have a problem with that. In the same book, Discover Canada, you can download this book, by the way, it's free from the Canadian you know, government website, immigration website. They say equality between men and women. Imam Hussain on the day of Ashura, whom did he choose to be the spokesperson of his revolution? Who was the individual who carried the message of Imam Hussein to Kufa and to Sham and back to Medina to the extent that there are reports because Zainab السلام, was poisoned a year later after Imam Hussein. Some reports say she was poisoned. Some reports say she died. But there are reports that say she was poisoned. He chose his sister, Zainab. Historians say she was the partner of Imam Hussein السلام, in Karbala. They referred to her as the hero of Karbala, Batala to Karbala. That's her title, one of her titles. A woman. He sacrificed his blood, he gave his blood, yet Zainab عليها, carried his banner and carried his message. She was his partner. They're talking about equality. Islam demonstrates equality in action. In action. Yes, you see a country in the world today that bans women from driving and they say these are the Muslim countries. Look at them. Women don't, cannot even drive in their countries. The one country out of all these Muslim countries. In another Muslim country, I won't mention it. In another Muslim country, there are more women in parliament than there are in the United States. In that other country, a Muslim country. So then what's wrong there? Women can do whatever they want. As long as within the boundaries of Sharia. Yes. Islam came not to restrict women, not to restrict individuals and humans. It came to introduce laws so that the society would have freedom. When they have driving laws here, there are driving laws. Can we say they restrict my freedom? Well, I want to drive at 100 here, right here on the street. Why do they? That's against my freedom, freedom of expression. Yeah, you want to express yourself this way and kill other people? Go express yourself in Jahannam. Why kill other people? So why do we have driving laws? It's so to protect people, to have a freedom, so that people can walk on the street without having to turn around a hundred times before they cross, like we see in some countries. You know? The minute they see somebody pedestrian crossing, they speed. You know? So, these laws 
Why can't we say they restrict people's freedom? They don't. They don't restrict people's expression. These laws are there to protect people, to protect the society, to protect the environment. Islam has laws that protect the human dignity, the human value. And Imam Hussain is a living example of this. He died for social justice. He died for the human dignity and the human value. A Christian... Lebanese writer by the name of Antoine Barra. Antoine in English is translated as Tony. Tony Barra. Antoine Barra. He wrote a book, Al Imam Al Hussein Fil Fikr Al Masihi. Imam Hussein, according to Christian ideology. In that book, he states that Hussein, alayhi salam, Imam Hussein, he is not simply a person who fought a battle and got killed in the battle. It is, was not a battle between just, you know, good and evil. No. This is a battle for over humanity, human justice, social justice, human freedom. He says, these are the values of Christianity. Human justice, human freedom. These are the values. Hussein died for these principles, for these values which are universal values. They don't belong to a certain group of people. And so another writer, again, he says that Hussein Bolas, his name is Paul, another Christian writer. He says, Hussein is not only for the Shia, he's for every human being because what he fought for is what every human deserves. That's Islam. That is Islam. These are the values of Islam. That's what we need to carry out to the people. This is what Islam is all about. So that people can learn and not 55% of Canadians would say that they don't share our about Muslims. They don't share our values. Imam Hussein alayhi salam gave the most precious things any human can give. Who would give a six-month-old baby for the sake of Allah and for the sake of human justice? Who would respect humanity the way he did? And even before Karbala, one day Imam Hussein salam was walking in Medina. He saw something that caught his eyes. He saw a man who appears to be a slave, a servant, with two pieces of bread. And in front of him is a dog. He takes one of the pieces of the bread, he gives it to the dog, and he eats the other one. This caught the attention and the eyes of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So he approached this man. He told him, Salamu alaykum. He said, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. He said, I saw you doing something that caught my attention. You gave half of your food to this dog. And you only ate the other half, which is not too much anyways. It's just a loaf of bread. Part of a bread, a piece of bread. Why did you do this? The man, he said, Today, I am not feeling too well. I'm having a bad day. You know, one of those days when you just, sometimes some things go wrong and you just don't feel very happy. He says, I'm having one of those days. Here in this part of the city of Medina, we don't have dogs. So this dog must have traveled from outside the city. And I saw that it is hungry. It's hungry. I thought, you know what? I am able to help this dog. So let me help him. Maybe Allah will help me and remove my difficulty. Go read in the literature. When did they establish the Society for Animal Rights? Go read. When was this established? Last century. Before that, did we have anything for human rights? I mean, even human rights, for God's sake. Even human rights were not even established until last century. 
Until today, we don't even have human rights. Maybe the animals maybe have more rights than the humans these days sometimes. So, Imam Hussein valued this. He really valued this. He said, who's your owner? Who owns you? He said, so and so. He's that man. He was a Jewish man. Imam Hussein alayhi salam goes. He knocks at the door of this Jewish man. His wife opens the door. She's shocked. Imam Hussein is at the house, is at the door. She runs to her husband. She tells him, Imam Hussein is at the door. The man rushes out. He said, Ya Aba Abdullah, what brings you to my place? He said, I am here to buy that servant of yours. I want to buy him from you. He says, Ya Aba Abdullah, you come to me and you expect me to sell you my slave? You bring the honor of coming to my house. What is a slave? You take the slave. He's yours. He's a gift. Have him. I mean, this Jewish man knows the value of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein than sometimes many Muslims. And unfortunately, many of us too. We wish we have such understanding of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein. If he comes to, to some people, Abi Abdullah Imam Hussein comes to some people and tell them, can I buy your slave? He says, yes, but for you, I'll charge you double. Ya Baba. You, I'll charge double. So, he said, what is the slave? He's yours. He says, but I give you the money as a gift. He said, and I accept the gift and give it back to you. He says, not only will I give you the slave. Imam Hussein told him, okay, I want to buy the garden or the farm in which he works in. The farm that he works in, your farm. I want to buy it. He said, what do you want to do with it? He said, I want to give, I want to free the slave and give it to him. Ahlul Bayt, not only did they free people, they cared about their social status in society. They tried to make them independent. He frees the slave, and then what does the slave do? Goes and begs on the street? No. They provide them with everything they need. Imam Sadiq used to train them. Some of them were barbers. He used to train them how to cut hair, for example. Some slaves, he trains them. He gives them something. So when they go to the real world, they have something to do. They don't need to beg. They raised individuals, Muslims. They raised a human being, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So Abi Abdullah said, I want to buy your farm and give it as a gift. He said, even the farm is a gift, Ya Aba Abdullah. It's yours. And not only that, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah, wa anna ka bil haq wa siyu rasulillah. He said, who would stop a man like you? Who Imam Hussein, it's not as if he had nothing to do, by the way. Just because he was not a Khalifa doesn't mean he was sitting down with his legs crossed, you know, and nothing else to do in his life. In Medina, he had many things to do. A lot of things to do. Uh, he is the grandson of Rasulullah. He is the wasi of Rasulullah after his brother Imam Al-Hassan Many things. Busy. Yet, he takes time off his busy schedule to come. You took time off to come and free a slave. I mean, who is the slave compared to who you are? Yet, you took time off to come here and buy him and buy the farm. No one would do this except a true noble man. A man who is a true successor to the Prophet. A man who carries the manners of the Prophet. A man who carries not only that, the blood of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. That's whom you are. And for this, of course, I testify that there is no God but Allah. I become a Muslim. 
So Imam Hussein goes to that slave and he tells him, you're a free man. Not only that, you get the whole farm. It's yours. It's for you. Tell us. Tell me today, where do you find such examples? These are Islamic values. You talk about equality, this is equality. You're talking about social justice, this is social justice. You're talking about freedom, this is freedom. That's a living example. This is Islam. And that's what we would like to tell all individuals and all humans. This is the Islam of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And this is the Islam of Ahlul Bayt And this is whom Imam Hussein is. A man who brought social justice to every human being. That is Islam. We have to do a lot of work, brothers and sisters, to become like Abi Abdullah al Hussein as living examples. Following his path of treating every individual with justice and dignity irrespective of their race and their color and their social status and their financial situation. It is difficult, unfortunately. Sometimes we have that within us. We have to take these materialistic values that don't have anything from religion out of our hearts. That's what our holy book calls for us to do. That's what our Ahlul Bayt taught us to do. And that's what they did. And these are the values we want to tell others and to show them. So that they know what is Islam. So that in a year or two, or five years from now, or ten years from now, it won't be 55% of the population saying that they don't share our values. The values that you have are the values of Islam. Yes, we might disagree with some, or some of them. Some issues we might disagree on. But this is not a disagreement as Muslims only. Other nations also disagree. In fact, Canadians who might be Christians, Orthodox Christians or Catholics might disagree with some of these values. So you don't consider them Canadians anymore? But we respect. That's what Islam teaches us. We may not agree with all values, but we respect them. But when you talk about freedom... When you talk about social justice, when you talk about equality, you're talking about Islam. When you talk about tolerance, when you talk about education and hard work, that is Islam. And look at Imam Hussein and look at what he sacrificed and what he gave. That is Islam. So we open our doors for everyone to come and educate and learn. And we have to take the initiative in inviting people to come here and learn. The Globe and Mail now is accepting letters about these articles because this article was yesterday, they have another article today. And tomorrow they'll be publishing editorials and responses. It is important, brothers and sisters, that when you go back home today, you try to find these articles, you can find them online on their website and respond to them. Tell them what is Islam and what is the values of Islam? What are they? Tell them. Be brief. Don't write an essay. Brief. But tell them this is what Islam is all about. When non-Muslims praise the Holy Prophet Muhammad and the values of the Prophet Muhammad, when non-Muslims praise Imam Ali, when Christians praise Imam Hussein, and other non-Muslims and non-Christians, they praise Imam Hussein. When you have individuals who call for justice and are famous for it, they say we learned from Imam Hussein. That is Islam. That is our Islam. So we share the values of freedom and democracy. Don't tell us we don't share these values. But let us put in the effort together as a community to spread these values, insha'Allah, of Islam. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this holy day, the birthday of Imam al Hussein, salamullahi alayhi, to be among the sincere followers of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. We say, Ya Aba Abdullah, 
Here we have come as your guests. And our only haja, our only need, is that you consider us among your Shia. That's it. That's what we want of you. This is our need. We have materialistic needs. We have other needs. We might have some help, those who are sick. But really, what we want from you today, Ya Aba Abdullah, is that consideration and the shafa'ah. That's what we want. This is it. Raise your hands for the dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the blessing of Abi Abdullah, accept our dua today, a holy day. Allah would not reject, as the hadith say, that the dua under the dome of Imam Hussein is accepted. Now, we tell him, Ya Aba Abdullah, we couldn't make it today under your dome physically, but our hearts are under your dome. Our spirits are under your dome. So everybody together, everyone, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Amma yujibu al-muttar idha da wa yakshifu al-su Amma yujibu al-muttar idha da wa yakshifu al-su أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 يا فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم بأبي عبد الله الحسين اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين شافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين اجعلنا من شيعة أبي عبد الله الحسين يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين اجعلني وجيها عندك بالحسين يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين اكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين أرزقنا زيارة الحسين في كربلاء عاجلا يا الله وشفاعة الحسين في الدنيا وفي القبر وفي الآخرة يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربيان صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين اقض حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات وحوائجنا جميعا يا الله إلهي بأبي عبد الله الحسين عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم كن لوليك حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه وفي كل وليا وحافظا وقائدا هو 
دليلا وتمتعه فيها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه إلى غنا بحق أم الحسين الزهراء فاطمة أرزقنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح موات الجالسين والحاضرين والشهداء رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات <تصفيق>